So in today's video, we are going to be creating a sleeping bag for dolls and stuffed animals from scratch. So if you want to see how to do it, just keep watching. If you're new to my channel, my name is Leslie. My channel is all about crafting on a budget. I do cricket, sublimation, and sewing videos. So if any of those things interest you, please consider subscribing, joining my YouTube family. We're on our way to 10,000 subscribers. So let's just jump into this video. Okay, so for this project, you're going to need a bag of polyfill. This one's from Walmart. This is a 16 ounce bag and it tells you that it's good for like pillows, dolls, stuffed animals, things like that. This is what we're going to use inside of our sleeping bag to be the pillow portion of it. You need some fabric. You can do two different fabrics if you want. One for the outer portion of your sleeping bag and the other part for the inner portion of it. It is totally up to you. I am going to try to use the whole same fabric all around. If I have enough, if not, I might have to use another fabric for the lining. We will see. But this is just some fabric that I got from Christmas. It's from Walmart. It's the Waverly brand. It's just some cotton fabric. Cotton fabric will work best for this. I wouldn't use knit. You're going to need a rotary cutter or some fabric scissors, whichever one you prefer. If you use a rotary cutter, a cutting mat is essential because you don't want to mess up your surface like a table you need velcro or if you want you can do ribbon i am going to be using this velcro from dollar tree i just have it on hand so i'm going to try to see if this will work you're going to need some pins or some clips totally up to you what your preference is you are gonna need a ruler that is going to help you measure but also cut straight lines because you can use it put it down and use your rotary cutter to cut across it you're also going to need your sewing machine and some coordinating thread i have a baby lock brilliant that's the sewing machine i will be using and i'm going to be using white wawak um thread i do prefer the guterman but i'm going to be using the wawak brand so let's get to cutting our fabric if you are going to do just one whole solid the same fabric all around you're gonna need two pieces of fabric that are going to be 21.5 by 9.5 inches two different fabrics one for the inner one for the outer you're gonna still need to cut one 21.5 by 9.5 and the other one the exact same size so i'm just gonna lay out my fabric i opened it up first thing i'm gonna do is i'm gonna take my ruler and i'm gonna line it up where my salvage is and i'm going to cut that off and your salvage is the part at the end that usually tells you the fabric name and all that and it kind of has a bunch of little holes in it and you should have a salvage on two sides on of your fabric i'm gonna take my ruler on this side and i'm gonna cut this edge just so that i can have a straight line to work with because this is not completely straight so i just cut that and now that i have a straight line there i'm going to measure out nine and a half which is right here for me and then i'm gonna take my ruler and I'm going to measure out 21.5. And I'm just going to mark where that is. So now I'm just going to put my ruler beside my 9.5 mark. This is kind of looking kind of small. You know what? That kind of looks kind of small. Because I mean it's going to end up being 9 inches. Because we have a seam allowance on each side. You know what i think i'm gonna end up just making this 10 inches instead of the nine and a half that i had just because i kind of i just want it to be a little bit bigger you can absolutely make this whatever size you want this is just the size that i'm going to go with so i think i'm gonna make mine 10 instead of nine and a half so i'm gonna line up my ruler with that 10 inch mark and I'm going to try to make sure that it is straight and if you want you could cut this on the fold so I'm just gonna line it up with that 10 inch mark 
and I'm gonna make it straight and then I'm gonna take my rotary cutter and I'm going to just cut along that line okay so I'm gonna put my ruler where I made that 21 and a half inch mark I'm gonna make sure it's straight and I can use the grid lines on my cutting mat to kind of help me do that okay and I'm just gonna cut along that line so this is what you should have now we're gonna do two of these and the reason why I'm doing it 21.5 is because this piece right here is going to end up coming up and then you'll have a little pillow here so it'll end up being like this and then you'll have a pillow here if you have a bigger doll maybe measure your dolls so you can see if they will fit in here or not so now that we have both pieces cut out we're going to put them right sides together if you have a directional print make sure you pay attention to that and that they're facing facing the same way so now you're just going to line up your fabrics and you're going to pin them all the way around so i have this batting this is what batting is it's what you use for quilts um, to kind of make that middle layer. So we're going to be adding this. So I just cut it to the size of our other two pieces. And this is just going to add more stability as well as just some more cushion to it. And just make it less flimsy. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to make sure we line up everything together. You want pretty sides facing, facing each other. And then you want your batting on whichever side. It really doesn't matter all too much which side because it's going to get flipped inside out anyways you can take a ruler and even anything out that needs to be evened out so that it can make it can make sewing smoother so i'm just gonna just even some things out so once you have evened it all out you can start clipping Now that we have kind of clipped everything together, we're going to mark where our pillow is going to end. And our pillow is going to be five inches. So I'm just going to take my ruler at the top and I'm going to just mark with my marking pen where five inches is at. And it's about right here. Now that I know where that's going to be, I'm going to mark where I'm going to leave an opening so that I can fill it. So I'm just going to, if it's going to end right there, I'm just going to make just an opening about that big. So we're going to move to our sewing machine and we're going to sew all the way around except for right here where we made our marks. Okay, so again, we're starting at our mark. We're going to use a one fourth seam allowance. You can, mine hasn't marked right here, but I have this handy foot right here that has a guide a metal guide and that just makes it so much easier i'm gonna start right at that line that i drew i'm gonna put my needle down put my foot i'm just using a straight stitch just the default setting that my machine comes with and i'm gonna make sure to double stitch at the beginning and end and you can use your hand in the back to kind of guide it a bit. If your machine struggles with thick layers, I would suggest using a walking foot to kind of help you through that. Make sure you take out your clips when you get to them. And make sure that if you see your layers are not um, even, make sure you just pull them to make them even again. And as you're getting closer to the corner, make sure you just go slow and you can use your hand wheel. I sometimes use my hand wheel to go instead of my foot um, so that I don't accidentally pass the one fourth. I'm gonna lift up my presser foot. I'm gonna turn it, put my foot back down, make sure my needle was down when I was turning it. And then I'm just going to start stitching that way. And as we're coming back to that line that we created, I think I'm actually going to leave a bigger 
line than I originally thought. So as I'm getting to the end, I'm gonna backstitch. I'm gonna lift my presser foot and now we're gonna trim our edges. So now that we trimmed our edges, we're gonna go through this opening. <laughs> so I'm just gonna go to the furthest corner, whichever one that is, and I'm just gonna pull that through here very gently. I'm kind of using my left hand to kind of help it a little bit. Surprise, I could fit it through that, <laughs> that little hole. Okay, so once we get to the end, we're just going to very gently, you don't want to mess up your break through your stitches. So now this is what it's looking like. I usually have a chopstick to kind of help me poke out the corners, but my child has stolen them. So I'm just gonna use this pen. I'm just gonna try to poke out my corners. It's not as effective as my chopstick for sure. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure from the top where my pillow is going to end so that I can sew that up when I go into um, top stitch. I'm gonna top stitch everything, so I'm gonna we're figuring this out as we go. I'm gonna make it at five inches from the top, which will be about right here. And I'm gonna draw a line all the way across. And I'm gonna try to make sure that that line is straight. Okay, so I'm gonna take my ruler and I'm just gonna draw that line all the way across. So that's where I'm gonna sew across there so that this part can be our pillow. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this back to our sewing machine and we're going to top stitch all the way around. Now, I'm not going to top stitch this. We're gonna use that to stuff our pillow and then we're gonna hand stitch that. And the reason for that is that once we've kind of filled this up, it's gonna be hard to get this under our sewing machine to stuff, um, to close it off. So we're not going to worry about top stitching right here, this opening. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out where my Velcro is going to go. Okay, I'm just going to fold it right around here. You can kind of do it however you would like. I'm going to do it a little bit below this line I don't think I want to do it at that line because that's where you know the pillow is going to be all fluffed up so I'm going to do it just right below that line so I'm going to mark where I want that velcro to go you can also just put it on here so I'm just going to put it there and then I'm going to figure out where it needs to go and I'm just going to take some clips use pins whatever you want and I'm just going to clip it in place so now I'm gonna go to my sewing machine and I'm just gonna sew on this velcro so I sewed on my velcro and I made sure that it fits on there so now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to flip this this way with my velcros on opposite sides and I'm going to sew it I'm gonna clip it so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to sew along this side and I'm just gonna follow that top stitch line that I'd made earlier. I'm gonna sew on that side and then on this side I'm gonna sew just from here to right where the Velcro is. I'm not gonna sew anything above that. So I sewed both sides. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kinda just flip it in where it's so cute. And make sure to kind of just pop your corners. You can just use your fingers. Just pop them out. See, I think the batting was a good call because it's making it just feel more sturdier. So now we have our sides all closed. We're like there, fully closed on those sides. And then we have this small little Velcro spot here. If you wanted to, you can make the whole side Velcro. It is completely up to you what you want to do okay so the last thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna stuff our pillow so we're just gonna take our polyfill and you can break it up with your hands to kind of just get it more evenly in there and we're just gonna stuff it until it's as full as you want it to be
I think that's pretty good. I think that's pretty good for me. Now what you can do is you can use a ladder stitch to kind of close that off. And if you don't know what the ladder stitch is, you take a little bit from this side, a little bit from this side, and you pull. And you got to do it from like the inner part so that you don't see it. So just do a ladder stitch and you can close it off and then you're all done. And then you have a cute little sleeping bag for your daughter's dolls, stuffed animals. You can make it bigger again if you would like. It is completely up to you what size you want it, but it is super cute. And I definitely think that the batting was a good call because it feels much more sturdy and more heavy duty.